Ladies and gentlemen, good evening everyone and a very warm welcome to all for Embassy REIT's first quarter 2025 earnings conference call. Currently, all participants are in the listen-only mode. Our speakers will address your questions during the question and answer session at the end. As a reminder, this conference call is being recorded. I would now like to introduce you for, uh, to our host for today's conference call, Ms. Sakshi Gar, Head of Investor Relations for Embassy REIT. Thank you. And you may begin, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the first quarter FI 2025 earnings call for MBC REIT. MBC REIT released its financial results for the quarter ended June 30, 2024, a short while back. As is our standard practice, we have placed a financial statement, earnings presentation discussing a performance, and a supplementary financial and operating data book in the investor section of our website at www.mbcofficeparks.com. As always, we would like to inform you that management may make certain comments on this call that one could be forward-looking statement. Please be advised that the REIT's actual results may differ from these statements. MCV does not guarantee these statements a result and is not obliged to update them at any time. Specifically, any financial guidance and performa information that we will provide on this call are management estimates, making certain assumptions, and have not been subjected to any audit, review, or examination procedures. We caution not to place undue reliance on such information, and there can be no assurance that we will be able to achieve the same. Joining me today are Arvin Maya, our CEO, Abhishek Agarwal, our CFO, and Rikki Patija, our GRCIO. Start off with brief remarks on our business and financial performance, and then open the floor to questions. Over to you, Arvin. Thank you, Sarshi. Good evening. Thank you all for joining us today to discuss our first quarter results. Happy to report on another, on another successful quarter to start off the financial year. Quarter, we reached a total of 1.9 million square feet and completed the acquisition of the 5 million square feet Embassy Splendid Tech Zone asset in Chennai. We also started a new redevelopment project in Embassy Moneta, aimed at increasing the leasable area from 0.3 million square feet to 0.9 million square feet with an expected yield on cost of around 20%. Most importantly, I'm delighted to announce our Q1 distributions of 5.6 per unit, which implies a DPU growth of 7% quarter-on-quarter and 4% year-over-year. As I had highlighted in our previous earnings call, FI25 is expected to be a year of growth for our business on all fronts, our scale, occupancy, NOI, and DPU. We are on track to deliver that growth to our investor base, which has crossed the 1 lakh mark recently. On another positive note, the recent budget announcement has reduced the holding period for long-term capital gains on REIT units from 36 months to 12 months. This puts us at par with listed equity shares and should further enhance the attractiveness of the REIT product amongst investors. A bit on the macro front. Indian office market continues to do well and recorded a strong first half with 31 million square feet absorption in the top seven cities, a 26% jump year over year. Almost all independent property consultants are now expecting calendar year 24 to create a new absorption record, beating the all-time high of 61 million square feet in 2019. Among cities, Bangalore and Chennai stand out, accounting for over 40% of H1 absorption and over 50% of the active RSPs in the market. With 100% of our developments coming up in these two markets, we are very well positioned. The key demand driver continues to be global corporates who are setting up or expanding their GCCs in India. In the past three years, almost 70% of our leasing has been to GCC clients. Our GCC exposure continues to rise with 87 such companies occupying close to 20 million square feet total area, forming part of a 250-plus tenant roster. Moving to our Q1 leasing performance. We leased 1.9 million square feet across 22 deals, including 0.7 million square feet of new leases and 0.6 million square feet of renewals at 11% combined threats. This included early renewal of two leases totaling 0.2 million square feet, which were due to expire in FY26. In addition, we secured another large pre-commitment of 0.6 million square feet, along with an expansion option for 0.3 million square feet. This pre-lease is with one of our largest GCC tenants and will construct a build-to-suit tower by redeveloping Block B in Embassy Maneta, with an expected yield on cost of around 20% on this redevelopment. Sir, sir, uh, sir, we are losing your audio in between. Okay. Uh, we, have one, we have once again unlocked additional value at our prime asset, Embassy Maneta. 
At Embassy Manita in the last few years, we have also initiated five refurbishment projects post large tenant exits spanning 2.2 million square feet area. Of this, we have already backfilled 1.3 million square feet at 75% spreads. These refurbishments have been instrumental in adding value to the asset and have enhanced the in-place rents of Manita by 10% just in the last 12 months. In terms of lease expiries, we have, which are friends loaded this year, we noted 0.9 million square feet of tenant exits during Q1. We have received an exit notice for an additional 0.4 million square feet from one of our IT services tenants in Pune, which we had indicated as a potential risk last quarter. We ended the quarter with an occupancy of 85% by area and 88% by value. Our Mumbai portfolio is already at 99% occupancy, Chennai at 95% and Bangalore at almost 90%. And three of our properties are now 100% occupied. So currently, we have a 5.8 million square feet vacancy in our portfolio with 2.5 million square feet area in Bangalore and 1.3 in Noida. I want to highlight that we have a strong traction for this 3.8 million square feet vacancy across Bangalore and Noida with a good pipeline for Manyata, Tech Village, and Oxygen. On the FEZ front, during Q1, we successfully denotified the 0.8 million square feet F2 block and the underdevelopment 1.4 million square feet D1 and D2 blocks in Embassy Manyata. With this, we have denotified a total of 3.4 million square feet area since April 23 and have already leased up over 70% of this. Another 0.3 million square feet block in Pune is under the denotification process. In addition, we have successfully demarcated another 0.1 million square feet in Noida this quarter to non-processing area under the new guidelines, taking the total demarcated area to 0.8 million square feet. Of this, over 40% is already leased up, and we have a strong pipeline for the remainder. Another 1 million square feet area in Bangalore is under the demarcation process, and we expect to complete this the next month. Moving to our development portfolio, our current development pipeline now totals 8.6 million square feet with a capex outlay of 4,600 crores. This is expected to result in incremental stabilized NOI of around 1,000 crores, implying around 20% yield on cost. If you look at the delivery schedule till end of FI26, Six blocks spanning 5.8 million square feet will come up in Bangalore and Chennai. We've already pre-leased around 70% of this area, including expansion options. This 15% addi this area addition to the existing 37.7 million square feet of completed space gives good visibility of the REACH growth runway in the midterm. Lastly, on a recent acquisition, we have completed the acquisition of the 5 million square feet Embassy Extended Tech Zone asset in Chennai and fully integrated the asset from June 24. With that, we are now a 51 million square feet office portfolio and have strong embedded growth levers, giving us a clear pathway to continue delivering DPU growth. I will now hand it over to Abhishek to present a financial update. Thank you, Thank you. Let me take you through the financial highlights for Q1. Our revenue from operations stood at Rs. 934 crores, up 2% year-on-year, and NOI at Rs. 758 crores, up 3% year-on-year. If you look at the commercial office segment, both revenue and NOI were up 4% year-on-year. The increase was mainly driven by new lease-ups at high releasing spreads and contracted rent escalations. For our solar segment, which represents less than 5% of our top line, the NOI dropped by 34% year-on-year, mainly due to a seasonal reduction in solar unit generation, as well as a reduction in the government tariff. On the other hand, our hotel segment NOI grew by 16% year-on-year, due to an occupancy uptick of 800 basis points to 61%, as well as an ADR growth of 5% year-on-year. We declared distributions of Rs. 531 crores, or Rs 5.6 per unit for the quarter, representing an increase of 4% year-on-year and 7% quarter-on-quarter. This increase was mainly driven by an uptick in our NOI, as well as positive working capital changes, which was partially offset by an increase in our interest costs. During the quarter, we raised around Rs 1450 crores of debt at an average rate of 8.06%. 
His debt was primarily used to refinance a commercial paper as well as other high cost debt at the recently acquired ESTG asset in Chennai. The debt, debt raise was done through multiple term loans at SPV level, tapping various new banks and hence expanding our debt investor base even further. Our net debt book now totals around Rs. 18,000 crores, implying a 32% leverage ratio and a 7.8% in-place cost and our balance sheet remains solid with dual AAA stable credit ratings. Lastly, on the forward financial outlook, we remain on track with the FY25 guidance that we had provided last quarter. We continue to expect our NOI to be in the range of Rs. 3215 to Rs. 3345 crores and DPU to be in the range of Rs. 22.4 to Rs. 23.1 per unit. At midpoint, this guidance implies a 10% growth in NOI and a 7% growth in DPU on a year-on-year -year basis. I will now go through some of the key assumptions on which our guidance is based. We have updated our annual leasing guidance from 5.4 million square feet to 5.6 million square feet post factoring the 0.2 million square feet early renewals signed in Q1. This comprises 3.8 million square feet of new lease up including new building deliveries planned for the year, 1 million square feet of pre-commitments and 0.8 million square feet of renewals. We now have 2.7 million square feet of lease expiries due for the year implying 1.9 million square feet of total exits. With that, we are updating our March 25 occupancy guidance to 88% by area or 91% by value. We expect an 18 to 20% increase in our interest costs on a full year basis. We remain on track to achieve our scheduled rent escalations and the NOI guidance for our hotels and solar parks that we provided last quarter. We have delivered on our distribution guidance every year and we remain focused on delivering this year's growth numbers to our unit holders. I will now hand it back to Irvin. On last update, Ritik has informed us of his decision to leave our organization at the end of September to pursue other interests. Ritik joined the REIT in 2018 prior to its listing and has been instrumental in Embassy REIT's success as well as the growth of the REIT asset class in India over the last six years. He's been a guide and mentor to many within the organization and well respected by all our stakeholders. On a personal note, he's been a great friend and a colleague to me over the years. We thank Ritik for everything he has done for the REIT and will definitely miss his wisdom and sense of humor. Ritik, would you like to say a few words? Thanks, Arvind. Uh, I'll keep it brief. It's been six wonderful years, and I'm immensely proud to have worked with this fantastic team at MC Reed. I'd especially like to thank Jitu, Aditya, Blackstone, the board, Arvind, the entire management team, and every single member of this organization. It's been a real privilege. I believe the REIT structure has enormous potential in India, and thanks to all the unit holders, the bond holders, and other stakeholders for your continued support. Lastly, I've built some fabulous friendships with a lot of you on this call, and I look forward to many more chats in the future, so I'll definitely be in touch. Thanks a lot. Let's move to Q&A, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We would also request participants to restrict their questions to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, good evening and, and congrats on you know, improving VPUs. Uh, my first question is with respect to your guidance of 91% occupancy by value. Where do you qualify your current occupancy in terms of value? So, you want to finish your questions? 
Yeah, and, and the second is if you can give more color on what's happening with you know some of the expiries, especially in Quadron and also Manneta. Sure, I think it's just uh, first question, easy answer. Right now we are 85% by area and 88% by value. Okay. And that's the number which goes up to around 91% by guide, guidance by the end of the year. Uh, in terms of expiries, Quadron, we kind of called it out last quarter that we see a potential risk with one of our tenants over there. And broadly in line with that, we received a notice from them for about 0.36 million or 0.4 million square feet to leave by later part of this calendar year. Uh, it's been a tough asset for us. I mean, we could dwell a bit more on that in due course. But uh, Manita, again, the exits in first quarter are a bit more front-loaded, but largely in line with what we put out last quarter. Last quarter, we had said that there is a potential exit of around 1.6. Of the 1.6.9 exits are in line. There's no further increase in that as of now, number one. Number two, having said that, yes, a large portion of these 0.9 exits are from the Manita asset because of which the occupancy has dipped to 83%, and we believe that it's a temporary dip. If you look in the last two years, Puneet, uh, what we have done is, yes, some of the older blocks, as they as they reach the ultimate expiry, some of them are exited. We've used that opportunity to refurbish buildings. We've actually refurbished three buildings in the last... I think one and a half to two years. All of them have reached close to 100% occupancy post refurbishment, with rentals increasing anywhere from two and a half to three x. Similarly, we're refurbishing now two blocks uh, pursuant to these exits, and we believe we'll have we'll see similar results in terms of both occupancy and rental growth. And when you look at it collectively for Manita as an asset, uh, besides the 12.3 million square feet which is completed, we have 3.7 million under construction. Of the 3.7 under construction, literally, I mean, 92% is pre-leased. We just have very, very little space left to lease. So when you look at it collectively, uh, as a park, I would say that it is doing phenomenally well. The dip in occupancy, what we've seen this quarter, is temporary or transitional in nature. And these two blocks, uh, when you refurbish, where does the area move? Yeah, so the redevelopments we are doing, refurbishment only doesn't increase the area. Okay, just the okay. Area, yeah. block okay. which we change the look and feel. But redevelopments we are doing two now in Manita. One is the D1, D2 block which we started last year, uh, which increased from 0.4 million existing. We broke it down. Now what we are developing is 1.4 million. And the new block which we spoke about, current is 0.3. That goes up to 0.9. Which is this block L4? Uh, no, this is block B or Magnolia. Okay, block B. Where you have A and B? N uh, not really. We'll probably not refer to a specific tenant on this call. Okay, understood. That's it. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Tayal from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, my first question is that um, you know the acquisition seems to be debt financed for now. Um, are you largely good with that, or is the plan to sort of um, you know reduce it by raising equity still on? So that's the first one. Um, second, Abhishek, you were mentioning that the total interest expense will go up by about 80 to 20 percent this year. Um, any sort of early views as to some of that increase? Does it carry forward into FY26, or you know is it really uh, that bulk of the increase uh, sort of comes through and then stabilizes within the year. Um, and then the third one is on the, uh, you know, distribution guidance. Um, you know, given that in Q1, the starting off at 4% YOY, and then, you know, between what you've laid out, that occupancy goes up from 85 to 88. It's really pretty easy to see, you know, how this goes up towards, let's say, um, you know, the low half of the range or towards the midpoint. I just wanted to understand what could it take to still strike the upper end of the guidance uh, from current levels. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll allow Ritik to take the first question. Yeah, look, uh, just, just on, on that acquisition. Right? Yeah, we, uh, very bluntly, we were comfortable doing it with debt. I think the, the broader picture, you know, when we went out there with, with the equity raise, clearly there was some discomfort in the market. But that, I, I don't think that really changes our overall strategy of at some point in time, 
thinking about you know using our uh, unit as currency. Uh, we've got, I mean, I think if you just look around, markets tend to be volatile, and I think you know we don't want to sort of be short-sighted in, in, in the view that you know at some point in time we we might be out there if the price is there to go out there and think about tapping the markets to delever or say have capital for a rainy day. Uh, that's effectively how we think about acquisitions and capital raising. It's always a, I mean, effectively still a very sort of new instrument. I think there's always been sort of a lot of conversations around from the market about, you know, what, how we should actually raise funding, but ultimately we'll, we'll also sort of, you know, keep that um, at our discretion and making sure that we do what's right for the read. And I'll take you to the second one. Yeah, so Kunal, on the interest expense, this 18 to 20 percent increase is because of one, uh, the capitalization that deliveries that we have done last year, deliveries that we will do this year, refinancing impact, uh, increase in the interest cost because of refinancing, and also because of the debt that we have taken to fund the equation. Now, how much will roll forward to 26? Two points. One, it will depend on the interest rate trajectory, and the second is will. I mean, it's too early. What we will do is. Uh, at the start of the next year, when we come back with the guidance, that time we will give the guidance of what, how much we'll roll forward to next year. And on your last question, Kunal, I mean, I'll just give you a very hypothetical, theoretical answer. I mean, what can move to the higher end of the range? It is early lease up, increase, decrease in interest rates, early collection of rentals. I mean, the basic business levers, if it, if you're able to front end a bit, that could lead to the numbers being in the upper end of the range. That is some of, if anything is delayed, it could be in the lower end of the range. That, that's broadly as simple as that. Okay. All right. And all the best. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agarwal from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, and thanks, Kritik. Uh, you know, uh, wish you the best uh, for the future. Uh, look forward to be in touch. Uh, so my question is, thanks. Uh, so my question is, uh, you know, uh, uh, Arvind, you mentioned in your in one of your remarks that you know Quadron has been a tough asset. Now uh, there was a media article a week back saying that you know uh, the. Uh, the company is looking to sell this asset. So, any comments on that that you want to mention? I will touch upon the asset uh, performance. Yeah, you want to finish your questions, Murat, or that's about it? Yeah, I think the second question is, uh, uh, you know, also on a broader question, you know, I think about a quarter back, uh, you know, you had engaged with the government to kind of classify REITs into, and, and when I say you, as, as in the entire REIT community, you had engaged with the government to classify REITs as an equity class, equity uh, asset class. Uh, where are those discussions, and, you know, has there, be, has there been any discussions or feedback from the regulators? Yeah, those are my questions. Sure. Uh, I guess on Quadron, uh, uh, what you saw in the press, I would largely say there are, there are market rumors. We we'll stay away from commenting on it. The only comment I would say is overall our philosophy has not changed. We are long-term owners of assets. But having said that, of course, we are open to recycling assets if we see better value in that. Uh, so we'll keep all options open. Uh, that's all I would like to say at this stage. Uh, in terms of equity classification, discussions are, are on. Uh, at a big picture level, I think... SEBI is open to this idea now, which is recent conversations. They are evaluating at highest levels as to see what needs to be done to classify this as equity. Uh, but we'll continue to stay engaged with them as IRA to see. And one of this this uh, whole change from 36 to 12, I would also say, is one of the levers for that. Uh, a few other things need to be put in place. But uh, big picture, I would say government is open to this idea, but it's still under discussion. Okay, perfect. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piyush Mittal from Kotak Alternate Asset Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, firstly, on the acquisition... Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, Mr. Mittal, you are sounding a lot distant. So if you can use the handset mode, please. Yeah, just... Hello, this is better? Yes, sir, much better. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so I have two questions. Uh, firstly, on the acquisition, now that uh, we aren't getting any rental support, 
uh, what would the revised cap rate for that uh, acquisition uh, would look like? That's number one. And the second one is uh, on the, uh, I, I read a footnote about NBC Whitefield, which said that a letter of invitation was received, which we don't seem to be evaluating. So if you could just throw some light on that. Yeah, so uh, honestly, cap rate, I'll not uh, get into the details of the number because uh, in short, I, all I would like to say is we've stuck to the numbers what was disclosed in the deck. Pre, rather without rental support, there was a number of 1185 crores, which is close to 80 crore reduction in the overall value. That is the number at which we bought. Uh, that's number one. In relation to the second part, uh, yes, we've received a ROFO, but as disclosed in the supplemental deck, necessary full information were not provided and hence we've not been able to respond conclusively on the roof. Uh, so are we planning on, uh, I mean, say subsequently if we were to receive that information, are we planning on evaluating it further or uh, that's been put on hold for now? So like any other roof asset, we'll continue to evaluate all of them based on all available data. Once we get it, we will continue to pursue or not pursue. All right, great. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Satinder Singh Beri from Eon Infotech Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a very healthy bump up in the distributions. So I've got one question uh, of uh, uh, Wind and then uh, two, three from Abhishek, so Arvind, uh, uh, any outlook on Oxygen, Texone, Cubix, how do you see them moving, uh, let's say, by 31st March 25, okay, because they seem to be still, uh, in that sense, okay, taking time, okay, so, and any potential exits that you see till March 25, okay. So let me take that and then you can give all the questions to Abhishek. Uh, I mean, in terms of oxygen, Noida, as I mentioned, the market is looking up. It's been pretty healthy over the last three, four months. Uh, you would have seen that the occupancy has gone up marginally. Uh, we also demarcated one full tower and a flow, and we're seeing traction on all these. Uh, three of the blocks are relatively new. So uh, I would say, and, and uh, uh, overall, Galaxy in Noida has already reached 99%. So I see the occupancy moving up over the next three quarters. That's one. Second, in, in Pune, overall, Indiawadi as a market is, has been slow for various reasons, as we've said even before. Uh, but TechZone and Cubics are relatively okay because they are in phase one of Indiawadi. And both these occupancies range uh, somewhere from early 70s to mid 70s. There's a little bit of traction, I think, if you look at both these assets put together. Uh, we have around 0.3 million square feet of non exceeded space and another building 0.3 million we're denotifying, which means around 0.6 million square feet of existing supply we have, which is non exceeded So from our point of view, I would say our focus is to see how we can lease up that space over the next three quarters. So that's the big picture comment on these three assets. Uh, but I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Satinder, on your questions on the numbers. Yeah, okay, okay thanks. Uh, Abhishek, uh, this time the distribution uh, Components, uh, so they've been very uh, tech efficient. Uh, okay, uh, the the dividend has seen a, a big bump up. Okay, uh, and the interest cost has come come down. Okay, so so do you see this as the trend uh, going forward, or is this more of a one-off? Satinder, you want to finish all your questions so that Abhishek can yeah. give all answers to them. Okay, yeah, one. Second was on the uh, dividends and distributions from EGN. Okay. They, they've dipped by about 22% despite a 2% increase in revenue. So anything to read into this, uh, that was the second. Third is uh, the working capital changes of uh, 374 million. So, so so what components make up this one, 374? Uh, so, so on the first question, uh, distribution split, so what happened is this basically the amount of dividend and the amount of interest actually amount of dividend depends on the profitability of each of these SPVs which is dependent on the interest cost and the depreciation because of capitalization the depreciation is also increasing and the interest also is increasing so very difficult to say what will be the trend going forward 
but uh, what we say this quarter it the dividend increased because of in one of the spvs uh, uh it was it started with a negative reserve last year it became positive reserve so this that could uh, be distributed as dividend in this quarter uh if you have to see the trend i think q4 of last year will be what that uh, will be what we will you know maintain in the next one year on the second question uh, total distribution from egl i think this number of 63 64 crores per quarter is a number which we think is a stabilized number at least quarter on quarter for this year uh the reason for dip if i have to say it depends on a lot of factors one is the uh, which which basically determines the cash availability with the uh as with the entity the payment of property tax and all of those so we believe that this 60 64 crores per quarter will be the number for the next one year on the working capital uh, like we mentioned last year that there were a lot of leases and pre leases that we did last year uh, but we did not receive the security deposit so we have not started receiving the security deposit the biggest component for this quarter's uh, working capital is security deposit itself okay 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 and what what would be this out of 374 so actually security deposit is uh, 50 crores for this quarter uh, offset by some payments and lower collection so yeah net net forty crores working capital okay okay Okay. Thanks a lot. All the best. If there are any other questions, I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As there are no further questions, on behalf of MBC Read, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.